What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 2, a Kappa mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So I finally got our, our ingot here, whatever that is that converts from aluminum. Yeah, we finally got that put back into place. I guess it's vibrantium or something. I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, off camera, I have been doing a little bit of stuff around the base. I made some more of these magnum torches. We have one over the the mob farm area, and we have one over in our main area, but I'm not sure how far they extend out. Previously in 1.7, they would go like really far. Like the tooltip says they do a 64 radius, but it's actually like a 128 radius. So they would do like a huge 256 diameter circle. Uh, but now that seems to have been fixed. But anyway, so we got one here in the main what main area, one in our like spawn area, and then one over here in the, um, I guess the monster farm area, the farming areas. So yeah, uh, I got rid of all the torches that were around. We have the extra magnum torches there for security. I've also been doing some stuff in the last millennium. Uh, so over the last, I don't know, since we started with the agricraft stuff, I don't know, what is that, like 40, 50 episodes now that we started with that? Uh, yeah, we've had a lot of seeds that we haven't planted. So I went and I started planting all those here. Yeah, sorry for the lag. Not much I can do about it at this point in time. <laughs> it's just going to get laggier and laggier. The only thing we can really do is kind of separate the crops out of the different areas. But anyway, uh, I've added in a brand new field over here. And I've added, I guess I've placed all of our different types of monster or animal seeds here. So we got chicken seeds, uh, sheep, skeleton, ghast, cow seeds, pig seeds, spi seeds, spider seeds, Wither skeleton seeds. Uh, I think we still, yeah, we have creepers and blaze seeds over here. And then I filled out this field as well. We have cobalt, ardite, coal, manulin, copper, emerald, diamond, alumite, and lapis. All of those guys are here. I think I might have added a few more over here. We have uh, osmium, electrum, bronze, lead, tin, invar. So, yes, we are collecting a lot of different stuff now, which is really awesome. I'm trying to get all the different seeds that we've tend to intend, at least the magic crop version planted. There's still a few more that we have that are not as important, like rubber seeds, obsidian. We're probably going to need those planted at some point. Manicio, we're definitely going to need planted at some point in the future. We just haven't gotten to that point just yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll need these plus the imaginary time block <laughs> a little bit later on. Probably same thing for our nether stars. We're going to want the imaginary time block whenever we get to that point in the game but for right now i'm pretty happy with the way things are going with those farms so uh we just kind of looked at our cobblestone on the way out kind of glanced at it let's take a look octuple compressed we're at to 33 pieces of octuple compressed which is amazing uh we were trying to do a quest previously uh i think it's under delta no gamma uh to the core we want to make the portal to the deep dark and we did not have enough of the bedrockium or the octuple compressed one of the two i can't remember so let's look deep dark if we wanted to go here it costs a bedrock which we've already made it costs four octuple compressed cobblestone which we have and four bedrockium ingots so i think we can do all that stuff now uh we definitely have four of these octuple that we can spare we have the bedrock one of these and then we should have the whoop I guess it was right there already. These four bedrockium ingots. Which zoom in your FOV because they give you like slowness four or something. Okay. So bedrockium here. Octuple. What am I doing? <laughs> this isn't the QED. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Bedrock. Wait. Oh, did I put it all away? I was trying to shift click it to my inventory and I shift clicked up here. Oops. Okay, so anyway, so there's that. We need the bedrockium once again. There we go. All right, so now we should be able to do this properly in the QED. There's that and that. Cool. Portal to the deep dark. That should complete the quest, I believe, just by having that in our inventory. Let's go place it over here by our other portals. Now, all the other portals that we have right now are kind of spaced evenly apart including the portal to the last millennium. So I don't know where we're going to stick this thing. Uh, I guess we could move this portal here and put the other portal over here. So there's still like a little bit of space between these guys. I don't know. There's like three blocks of space between everything. And now we're going to ruin it. It's fine. It's fine. 
So let's break that. We will set this one here. Set that one here. And that goes there. Cool. So now we have a portal to the deep dark. Let's go there real quick. Why not? I don't think there's going to be a lot of things that we need in the deep dark, although it does have a higher spawn rate for all the different ores. We have access to the mining world, which is probably more than what we need right now for uh, all of the uh, mining that we want to do. So yeah, we've seen the deep dark before. Uh, you start in the cobblestone in the ceiling. You kind of dig your way down. Uh, yeah, you take damage if you're in the dark. I think it's darkness level three or lower. You start taking like suffocation style damage. Anyway, we can come down here real quick. Just kind of like drill a hole down. Just kind of see what's going on. All right, so here's a little bit of bedrock. I'll put a torch down here so we don't suffocate. Oh, check it out. We got like a wizard tower that spawns here. That's something I wasn't aware of. Uh, that also looks like the things that we saw in the nether, where it's just like a hole all the way down to bedrock. Whoa, that goes down to the void. <laughs> okay, uh, I wasn't expecting a hole all the way down to the void. That's super scary. Maybe that's always been a thing in the deep dark and I just don't remember. I don't know. You gotta place torches every now and then. It's kind of like refreshing your air if you're underwater, right? Uh, so this tower I wasn't expecting to see here. Is there anything good? Healing Diamond Helm of the Sun. Heals a player when equipped. I didn't know that was even a thing. Like, I wonder what kind of region effect that is. Are my, is my health down? I can't even tell. If I equip that, does that start giving me a little bit of health? Uh, if it does, it's very slow. So anyway, I prefer having the night vision. Um, okay. Yeah. We've seen these before. Oh, you know what? There's an enchantment table in there. Can I break into here? I'll take that. <laughs> Not that it's super useful. Oh, that's cool. I wonder why that's changing. Oh, you know what? It's probably because we are in the deep dark and there is no moon here. I wonder if that shows you the current moon phase in the overworld. All right, let's go check out what this thing is. That is bright wood ring of rending. Places cakes on solid surface when used, provides illumination. All right, none of that stuff is very good. I'll grab the uh, <laughs> anvil. Not that we really need it, but might as well just grab it. All right, so this is the deep dark. Uh, like I said, it's scary. Uh... Yeah, if you uh, are in the dark and you don't have light around, you'll start taking suffocation damage. So that makes it a little bit scary. And there's not a lot of reason for us to currently use that, but we might as well go there and check it out, right? Okay, so we got that done. What did I just get? Oh, loot bags. <laughs> okay, so that quest is now complete. So we have a few more quests to do. I kind of want to knock out all the ones in that same section before we move on. And I definitely want to keep busting out all these different quests that we have. Uh, this, I'm just going to turn into the raw mana essence. Oh, I didn't know you could turn the... Okay, so what is this thing called? Artifact? So I did hook up all of our storage drawers over by the mob farm. Yeah, all of those are hooked up So to a storage bus so we can see everything over there. I didn't realize that you could just take this stuff and turn that into raw mana essence directly. That's awesome. Okay, so that's good to know. Uh, let's go ahead and put that away. Lunar calendar does not appear to be moving anymore. So I guess it is currently that moon phase. It's hard to see. <laughs> it looks, that looks right to me. Cool. All right. Uh, what mod is that from anyway? That's from the artifacts mod. Ah, okay. Well, anyway, let's go and put that away. What did I just click in there? I clicked something. Now it's going to drive me crazy. I don't know what that was. That was my wireless thing. Not the, not the booster, this. Okay, we're good, we're fine. So let's take a look. So since we went to the deep dark, that's gonna give us a Soldjourner's Staff, a Lantern of, and a Chance Cube, plus a Loot Chest, let's go ahead and claim that. Now one of these things, and I can't remember, is it this one where you put like torches in it? Consumes torches, can place them at long distance, but cost extra. Okay, so we have 56 torches. Now if I right click over here, Oh, okay. So that was just eating a whole bunch of torches. Ah, so it takes the torches out of my inventory, puts it inside of itself there. How do you place torches at a distance? Oh, okay. Just right click, but it costs extra. 
So the, we have 49 torches. We place one right here. We have 45. Okay, so it does cost like four additional torches. I guess three additional one to place one. That's kind of cool. Not something we need right now, but four places like the deep dark. Yeah, that's definitely pretty cool. Anyway, I don't think we're going to get much use out of that guy. Um, Lantern of Paranoia says places torches in unlit areas automatically. Shift right click to activate. So let's try that one. Again, we don't really need torches placed, but let's try and just see what it looks like. So we have to shift right click for that to work. Let's come over here where it is dark. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I like that. I don't like how it places on the side of the blocks, but I definitely like how it just kind of randomly... Well, I guess it's not really random. It's probably putting them in a uh, nice pattern to make sure that everything's lit up appropriately, right? I wonder, did that place torches on the lower level or only on this level? Only on that level. Okay. Anyway, that's kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> uh, let's move on. What uh, what was the other thing we got here? Uh, didn't we get another item? I can't remember now. Let's go back. Was it gamma? This? Oh, a chance cube. Okay, so we saw everything that it does give us. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and then open up our loot chest. We get incendiary grenades. Yes, we've seen those before. You toss those guys on the ground. It sets everything on fire. Might as well just do another one because why not? It's always fun to watch. <laughs> that's so crazy. All right. Well, there's nothing over there that's going to really burn. And I don't really know if these things are very useful for much. I guess like if you wanted a whole bunch of netherrack on fire, that would probably be the fastest way to do it. But again, it's, I don't know how practical that really is. Um, okay. So we've already done that one. So let's do combustion engine. Cool. So this wants us to make a combustion engine. It says it produces power with gasoline, fuel, and water as a coolant. Uh, did I spell that wrong? C O M B U. I must have spelled it wrong. I don't know why the this one showed up, but didn't look like this one did. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and make this guy. So we need two fluid tanks, which I'm pretty sure we have in here. I don't know why those didn't click in. Uh, we need a machine chassis. Go ahead and tell the system to craft one of those. We're also going to need to tell the system to craft up a piston. And I don't know what the other two items were that we needed. Was it some kind of gear? It was basic gear. Okay, let's do it in this terminal. All right, so we need to get ourselves, let's make like, I don't know, 200 sticks just so we have a little bit of extra in the system. It's not gonna hurt anything by having those. All right, so there is two basic gears that we do that, and there's a combustion engine. Cool, all right, so that's gonna give us a chance cube and then a loot chest, let's claim it. Um, so let's take a look at this thing. I imagine this probably does not produce a whole lot of power. It does not appear that we can put in uh, any of the capacitor upgrades. So I assume we want water in there and then it said gasoline, right? We have gasoline over here. I'm kind of curious how much power this thing generates. It's probably not going to be that much. It is 60 RF per tick. And it appears to be using the same amount of fuel as it does water. So I guess the other question would be is like, how long does this actually produce power? It's quiet. I like that. <laughs> um, it says 25 ticks per millibucket, 32 ticks per millibucket. Okay, so it's going to use the water a little bit faster than the fuel. But, yeah, we're kind of beyond this point right now, right? Because we have the nether star generator. So let's just go ahead and say we've made it. Iron Paxel It's not a thing that we need either. All right, so let's move on. Next quest, 
gamma section uh logic pipes okay so this is a thing uh logistics pipes is another alternative to doing the ender io inventory panel like we did at the start of the series uh you can do logistics pipes i tried learning them before i'm not a fan like it just seems overly complex and overly slow and overly cumbersome when you could spend time to make this or you could divert your efforts to make the applied energistics that's the way i wanted to go so i mean this is an option i just yeah not not really interested so we need a logistics power junction and a soldering station logistics power junction and soldering station so soldering station is very inexpensive we'll go and make one of those we need a crafting table all right so there we go crafting a table soldering station made and then the logistics power junction again very inexpensive now if i liked logistics pipes that might be a pretty good <laughs> a pretty good way to get storage going earlier on but yeah like i said i've tried learning it before and i i'm just not a fan i tried to to like it but no anyway uh loot chest let's right click this essence brick plus another essence brick all right so both of those we've received many times in the past Nah, not really needed okay so we need open the floodgates so this wants us to make three floodgates these are retrieval tasks uh the floodgates i believe that's from build craft it says can place fluid down however don't use too many of these at once or you'll suffer from memory leaks ah okay so there's some kind of a problem if you use too many of these at the same time it'll crash your game or whatever uh all right so we need flood gate and it wants us to make three of them all right so we should be able to do that i think um let's make three of these and then we need iron bars which we do have on autocraft they'll just make like a hundred of those because it doesn't matter it's not that much iron so one two three is that going to complete the quest or no the text submit there it is okay uh so that will give us a chance cube and a loot chest so these floodgates are really great for later on if we ever decide to do big reactors they are great for filling in all the stuff between the fuel rods or the outside edge things or whatever i'm not sure if we're gonna do big reactors in this playthrough it seems like i do those all the time and the nether star generator i believe that we already have right now just that 8x seems to be doing very well like two or three more of those and i think we'll be set but it really depends i don't know i really don't know what else we're gonna need for power going forward we might have to do something like a big reactor we'll see all right so moving on back to the gamma section we have the quarry upgraded this one us to make all the different uh upgrades for our ender quarry that we made previously so yes we have the ender quarry but we never made any of the upgrades for that so it wants us to make world hole upgrade all right normally if you put on the ender quarry it fills everything in with just dirt so i guess the world hole upgrade would make it so it just completely deletes the blocks as it mines them ender quarry silk touch upgrade all right so you silk touch the blocks as you mine them ender quarry fortune three upgrade yeah you want fortune three or you want silk touch either way and then speed three upgrade all of those are pretty good let's take a look at these all right so the world hole upgrade is very inexpensive i guess we we probably have everything we need for this uh oh we need the quarry base ender infused obsidian ender infused obsidian we don't have those on auto craft either we just have a stack of them now it doesn't really matter all right so we need burn quartz plus those so burn quartz we've had we've used plenty of that around the base already yeah that's pretty easy just quartz smelted all right i'll put that there let's make 16 ender quarry base upgrades we don't need this many i don't think but all of this stuff is rather inexpensive we have all the things around so we might as well just go and make a few extra okay so here we go here's a ender quarry world hole upgrade the silk touch upgrade requires a golden pickaxe with silk touch on it aha uh -huh. so in order to do that we're going to use our enchanter and then we, i think we need a book and quill right 
Did I not make any extra? Oh, no, we have one right here. All right. So there's that. So the silk touch, where is silk touch in here? It's a slime ball. All right. I think it's at 32 levels of experience. Currently it says we have none. And I don't know if that's because we changed dimensions or whatever. Uh, so let's go over. I really should move <laughs> our, um, our XP obelisk to an easier to get area. It is kind of annoying having to fly back and forth every single time for this stuff. Uh, 50 levels seems good. All right. So there's that. And then there is a silk touch upgrade. Uh, so we need a golden pickaxe. Very easy to do. And some sticks. I think we have to do something very similar for the fortune upgrades as well. All right. So there's that in that six levels easy. All right. So now we should be able to make our silk touch. Uh, where is it? This one? Easy. Cool. But anyway, let me go ahead and continue on. I think in order to make the fortune three, yeah, we need fortune pickaxes with the fortune two that requires fortune on a golden pickaxe. And the first one is again, fortune on an iron pickaxe. So let me go ahead and make all this stuff and we'll be right back guys. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I did a lot of the crafting here and this is takes a little bit of time because we need two efficiency fives. We need one efficiency three and one efficiency one for making the speed upgrades. Whereas the fortune ones was just a whole bunch of fortune ones on an iron, a gold and two diamond picks. Anyway, we got these all done now. So that should now complete the quest. It did great. So we will choose a loot chest here. Nice, nice. And what do we get for our loot chest? We get viaducts viaduct i don't know anyway uh we'll go ahead and put all of those away so the ender quarry stuff we have ready to go if we need to use the ender quarry for anything in the future i'm not sure like what we would use it for right now but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a purpose for later on okay so let's knock out these food generators so a culinary generator now, is that a retrieval task or is that a crafting task? It is crafting. Okay. So we need to make each of these different things. So, uh, cobble stone. What do we have as far as double compressed? We have a lot of this stuff. All right. So let's make some of those probably make a, oh, I don't know. We need at least eight. Eight of those, I do believe, unless we have to do the 64X, and then we're going to need a lot of those furnaces. But to make these first two, we should only need eight. Oh, no, we're going to need a little bit more than that because of this, too. <laughs> okay, uh, compressed cobblestone. Let's just make a lot of these furnaces. Let's stop trying to skimp out. Let's just make all the ones that we need. All right, so we got the iron furnace made. We don't have these copper coils or the red alloy, I don't think. Do we have copper coil on auto craft we don't we might want to do that i'm not sure all right so there's that uh we need the whoa wait wait what is that a piston okay i will tell the system to craft up eight of those because we will need those to turn all the culinary generators into the 8x version so there's a survivalist generator and there's that there's a culinary generator tier one all right, so that wants us to make the tier two as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to make a few more of these things. Uh, all right, so we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That should be all the iron furnaces that we need. Then we're going to need a bunch of these. I don't know. That's probably not going to be enough, although it might be. I'm not 100% sure. And how are we going to do on this? We can make one. <laughs> okay, so what is that? That is compressed cobblestone. And we still have double compressed in here. All right, so let's go ahead and undouble compress the double compressed. There we go. All right, so we want to make like seven more. Well, there's a total of five, so we need two more. So we need more of the copper thingies, and those are made with this hemp stuff. All right, so now we should have everything ready to go for this. I don't really know how many of those we need. But anyway, uh, we can make... There you go, five, six, 
seven. Cool. So now we should be able to turn those into the culinary generators. There is a total of eight of those. You know what? I shift clicked. Is that going to screw things up? It might. Hopefully it doesn't. Ah, I keep forgetting about that whole shift click thing. Oh, you know what? No, we're fine because we still have to turn that into the culinary generator 8x, which requires this transfer node. Transfer node energy. We have a hyper energy, not the energy one. So that's a breadth first plus gold. We have a plenty of these still from a long time ago for gold. Uh, gold ingots. We're up to 1.6 million of those. That's pretty good, right? And then we need uh, the transfer nodes. We need four of these things. We make them four at a time. There we go. Cool. All right. So now we should be able to make our energy node over here. So was it the like this? I don't remember the recipe. I always do these things wrong. Nope, I did it right. Okay. I'm I'm pretty good. I'm a genius. So some would say. Maybe okay. Maybe not. Maybe not a genius. Maybe that's going a little too far. Anyway, so there is that plus this, and there's a culinary generator. Quest complete. Nice. Okay, so let's claim this, and we will claim this. Cool. So now it wants us to make the 64X version, which is eight, uh, seven more of these culinary generators, plus that hyper energy that we already have. Let me go ahead and craft up seven more of these things, and we'll be back, guys. Ah, auto crafting is so good. All right, so there is seven more of these things, and then we should be able to do this guy right there to complete that final quest. Huh, cool. All right, so culinary generator completely done. We'll claim another chest. Yeah, so all of those are now done. So we have auto crafts for the tier one and the tier two. However, we do have to make the energy nodes for this one. And then, yes, eight of those plus the hyper energy node we already had in the system makes this guy. I am kind of curious, though. Does this say how much power it produces? What about that epic bacon? If we put that in there, does it say how much power? I think these make like 3,000 RF per tick or something. Yeah, 3872. And it only lasts with that for, I don't know, what was that, like four seconds or something? It made 152,000 RF. Yeah, I think... I still think the nether star generator just a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and pop these open. So we get a fleeting stone. We've gotten this one a few times before. It's a companion. Uh, we got some more agricraft irrigation stuff. Cool. And then this one is going to be super awesome, right? An unbreakable wand. Okay, so not super awesome. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so what else do we have here on the gamma section? Is that it? So everything besides the angel wings, and we talked about this one before. So the angel ring requires the extreme crafting table. So we'd have to do the dire crafting for this. It does require our ring of flight in the recipe. And then this does not go in your bobble slot. So we'd have to keep it in our inventory all the time. I feel the ring of flight is far superior to that. So that's why we are sticking with this. We will make the angel ring later on after we have like our draconic armor and we can fly anyway at that point it doesn't matter about our ring of flight at, anymore and we can use it for this specific purpose but for right now yeah i think we're just going to go ahead and not make the angel ring we'll call this section done until later so that's pretty much wrapping up a good portion of our earlier quest we still have some of this Batania stuff to do, but we're going to be messing with these a little bit later as well. Like, we're going to have to do those. I kind of want to wait to do, like, the Ring of Odin, for instance, until we get the uh, Draconic Staff of Power, because that'll make farming the Guardian of Gaia boss way easier, and I'll be definitely able to do that <laughs> at that time. But for right now, yeah, we have to kill one at a time. It just takes a little bit of time per... Uh, all right, so... Epsilon section, we're kind of running to the end of that. We have a few more mechanism things to do, right? And then the Zeta or Zeta section, looks like we have some MFR stuff to do, laser drills, and that's going to get us into, what is this, Quantum Flux mod? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here that we need to do as well. Imaginary crop growth. We talked about that a little bit. Let's look at this. Imaginary time block. What does it cost to make one of these? 
So it requires growth pulsers, which I think we got, didn't we? We have 12 of those. Okay, so it requires growth pulsers. We already have those. Compressed Gaia. Okay, so this is another thing that's going to wait until we have the Draconic Staff of Power. Liquid Sunshine is not difficult to make. These advanced circuits are not difficult. And the Cubic Cluster is a little difficult because it requires the Amplification Crystals, which requires the PRC LX100 Logic Expansion Card plus Rubies. And those require Mercury Plastic. I, actually, you know what? Those aren't that bad. I was thinking those were a little bit tougher. Uh, the Cubic Cluster Level 4 requires more of those and... Three, two, one. Yeah, so it's a little expensive. Then we need the iron casing with these electro silicons. That's going to be a little expensive to do, but it's doable. Dark stone. Oh, uh, yeah, all this stuff is doable. We'll have to set up all the auto crafts for this. Uh, okay, so these cubic crystals require the PRC LX300 logic expansion, which requires the 100 plus more of the stuff. So. Yeah, the recursive crafting on that gets a little pricey. We're definitely going to want to auto-craft that. We'll have to set up the patterns. So we'll probably look at that next time that we start doing a whole bunch more quests, which might just be next episode. I want to get through most of these earlier game quests so we can move on to the later game stuff. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.